Leonardo da Vinci was a Renaissance artist and engineer known for paintings like The Last Supper and Mona Lisa and for inventions like a flying machine. Leonardo da Vinci was a Renaissance painter, sculptor, architect, inventor, military engineer and draftsman the epitome of a true Renaissance man. Gifted with a curious mind and a brilliant intellect, da Vinci studied the laws of science and nature, which greatly informed his work. His drawings, paintings and other works have influenced countless artists and engineers over the centuries. Da Vinci was born in a farmhouse outside the village of Anchiano in Tuscany, Italy about 18 miles west of Florence on April 15, 1452. Born out of wedlock to respected Florentine notary Ser Piero and a young peasant woman named Caterina da Vinci was raised by his father and his stepmother. At the age of five, he moved to his father's estate in nearby Vinci the town from which his surname derives where he lived with his uncle and grandparents. Young da Vinci received little formal education beyond basic reading writing and mathematics instruction but his artistic talents were evident from an early age. Around the age of 14 da Vinci began a lengthy apprenticeship with the noted artist Andrea del Verrocchio in Florence. He learned a wide breadth of technical skills including metalworking, leather arts, carpentry drawing painting and sculpting. His earliest known dated work a pen and ink drawing of a landscape in the Arno Valley was sketched in 1473. At the age of 20, Da Vinci qualified for membership as a master artist in Florence's Guild of St. Luke and established his own workshop. However he continued to collaborate with Del Verrocchio for an additional five years. It is thought that Del Verrocchio completed his baptism of Christ around 1475 with the help of his student, who painted part of the background in the young angel holding the robe of Jesus. According to lives of the most excellent painters, sculptors and architects written around 1550 by artist Giorgio Vasari Del Verrocchio was so humbled by the superior talent of his pupil that he never picked up a paintbrush again. Most scholars however, dismissed Vasari's account as apocryphal. In 1478 after leaving Del Verrocchio's studio, da Vinci received his first independent commission for an altarpiece to reside in a chapel inside Florence's Palazzo Vecchio. Three years later the Augustinian monks of Florence's San Donato Escopto tasked him to paint Adoration of the Magi. The young artist, however would leave the city and abandon both commissions without ever completing them. Many historians believe that da Vinci was a homosexual, Florentine court records from 1476 show that da Vinci and four other young men were charged with sodomy, a crime punishable by exile or death. After no witnesses showed up to testify against 24-year-old da Vinci the charges were dropped but his whereabouts went entirely undocumented for the following two years. Several other famous Florentine artists were also known to have been homosexual, including Michelangelo, Donatello, and Sandro Botticelli. Indeed, Homosexuality was such a fact of artistic life in Renaissance Florence that the word Florenzer became German slang for gay. Although da Vinci is known for his artistic abilities, fewer than two dozen paintings attributed to him exist. One reason is that his interests were so varied that he wasn't a prolific painter. Da Vinci's most famous works include the Vitruvian Man The Last Supper and the Mona Lisa. Vitruvian Man art and science intersected perfectly in da Vinci's sketch of Vitruvian Man, drawn in 1490 which depicted a nude male figure in two superimposed positions with his arms and legs apart inside both a square and a circle. The now famous sketch represents da Vinci's study of proportion and symmetry, as well as his desire to relate man to the natural world. The Last Supper around 1495, Ludovico Sforza, then the Duke of Milan, commissioned da Vinci to paint the Last Supper on the back wall of the dining hall inside the monastery of Milan's Santa Maria del Grazie. The masterpiece, which took approximately three years to complete, captures the drama of the moment when Jesus informs the twelve apostles gathered for Passover dinner that one of them would soon betray him. The range of facial expressions and the body language of the figures around the table bring the masterful composition to life. The decision by da Vinci to paint with tempera and oil on dried plaster instead of painting a fresco on fresh plaster led to the quick deterioration and flanking of the Last Supper. Although an improper restoration caused further damage to the mural, it has now been stabilized using modern conservation techniques. Mona Lisa In 1503, da Vinci started working on what would become his most well-known painting, and arguably the most famous painting in the world the Mona Lisa. The privately commissioned work is characterized by the enigmatic smile of the woman in the half-portrait, which derives from da Vinci's sfumato technique. Adding to the allure of the Mona Lisa is the mystery surrounding the identity of the subject. Princess Isabella of Naples, an unnamed courtesan and da Vinci's own mother have all been put forth as potential sitters for the masterpiece. It has even been speculated that the subject wasn't a female at all but da Vinci's longtime apprentice Salai dressed in women's clothing. Based on accounts from an early biographer, however, 
The Mona Lisa is a picture of Lisa del Giacondo, the wife of a wealthy Florentine silk merchant. The painting's original Italian name, La Gioconda, supports the theory, but it's far from certain. Some art historians believe the merchant commissioned the portrait to celebrate the pending birth of the couple's next child, which means the subject could have been pregnant at the time of the painting. If the Giacondo family did indeed commission the painting, they never received it. For da Vinci, the Mona Lisa was forever a work in progress, as it was his attempt at perfection, and he never parted with the painting. Today, the Mona Lisa hangs in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, secured behind bulletproof glass and regarded as a priceless national treasure seen by millions of visitors each year. Battle of Anghiari in 1503, da Vinci also started work on the Battle of Anghiari, a mural commissioned for the Council Hall in the Palazzo Vecchio that was to be twice as large as the Last Supper. He abandoned the Battle of Anghiari project after two years when the mural began to deteriorate before he had a chance to finish it. In 1482, Florentine ruler Lorenzo de' Medici commissioned da Vinci to create a silver lyre and bring it as a peace gesture to Ludovico Sforza. After doing so, da Vinci lobbied Ludovico for a job and sent the future Duke of Milan a letter that barely mentioned his considerable talents as an artist and instead touted his more marketable skills as a military engineer. Using his inventive mind, Da Vinci sketched war machines such as a war chariot with side blades mounted on the sides, an armored tank propelled by two men cranking a shaft and even an enormous crossbow that required a small army of men to operate. The letter worked, and Ludovico brought Da Vinci to Milan for a tenure that would last 17 years. During his time in Milan, Da Vinci was commissioned to work on numerous artistic projects as well, including The Last Supper. Da Vinci's ability to be employed by the Sforza clan as an architecture and military engineering advisor as well as a painter and sculptor spoke to Da Vinci's keen intellect and curiosity about a wide variety of subjects. Always a man ahead of his time, Da Vinci appeared to prophesy the future with his sketches of devices that resemble a modern-day bicycle and a type of helicopter. Perhaps his most well-known invention is a flying machine, which is based on the physiology of a bat. These and other explorations into the mechanics of flight are found in Da Vinci's Codex on the Flight of Birds, a study of avian aeronautics, which he began in 1505. Like many leaders of Renaissance humanism, Da Vinci did not see a divide between science and art. He viewed the two as intertwined disciplines rather than separate ones. He believed studying science made him a better artist. In 1502 and 1503, Da Vinci also briefly worked in Florence as a military engineer for Cesar Borgia the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI and commander of the Papal Army. He traveled outside of Florence to survey military construction projects and sketch city plans and topographical maps. He designed plans, possibly with noted diplomat Nicola Machiavelli, to divert the Arno River away from rival Pisa in order to deny its wartime enemy access to the sea. Da Vinci thought sight was humankind's most important sense and eyes the most important organ and he stressed the importance of saper videre or knowing how to see. He believed in the accumulation of direct knowledge and facts through observation. A good painter has two chief objects to paint man in the intention of his soul Da Vinci wrote. The former is easy the latter hard, for it must be expressed by gestures and the movement of the limbs. To more accurately depict those gestures and movements Da Vinci began to study anatomy seriously and dissect human and animal bodies during the 1480s. His drawings of a fetus in utero, the heart and vascular system, Sex organs and other bone and muscular structures are some of the first on human record. In addition to his anatomical investigations, da Vinci studied botany, geology, zoology, hydraulics, aeronautics and physics. He sketched his observations on loose sheets of papers and pads that he tucked inside his belt. Da Vinci placed the papers in notebooks and arranged them around four broad themes, painting, architecture, mechanics and human anatomy. He filled dozens of notebooks with finely drawn illustrations and scientific observations. Ludovico Sforza also tasked Da Vinci with sculpting a 16-foot-tall bronze equestrian statue of his father and founder of the family dynasty, Francesco Sforza. With the help of apprentices and students in his workshop, Da Vinci worked on the project on and off for more than a dozen years. Da Vinci sculpted a life-size clay model of the statue, but the project was put on hold when war with France required bronze to be used for casting cannons, not sculptures. After French forces overran Milan in 1499, and shot the clay model to pieces, da Vinci fled the city along with the Duke and the Sforza family. Ironically, John Giacomo Trivulzio, who led the French forces that conquered Ludovico in 1499, followed in his foes' footsteps and commissioned da Vinci to sculpt a grand equestrian statue, one that could be mounted on his tomb. After years of work and numerous sketches by da Vinci, 
Trivulzio decided to scale back the size of the statue, which was ultimately never finished. Da Vinci returned to Milan in 1506 to work for the very French rulers who had overtaken the city seven years earlier and forced him to flee. Among the students who joined his studio was young Milanese aristocrat Francesco Melzi, who would become da Vinci's closest companion for the rest of his life. He did little painting during his second stint in Milan, however, and most of his time was instead dedicated to scientific studies. Amid political strife and the temporary expulsion of the French from Milan, da Vinci left the city and moved to Rome in 1513 along with Salage, Melzi and two studio assistants. Giuliano de' Medici, brother of newly installed Pope Leo X and son of his former patron, gave da Vinci a monthly stipend along with a suite of rooms at his residence inside the Vatican. His new patron, however, also gave da Vinci little work. Lacking large commissions, he devoted most of his time in Rome to mathematical studies and scientific exploration. After being present at a 1515 meeting between France's King Francis I and Pope Leo X in Bologna, the new French monarch offered da Vinci the title premier painter and engineer and architect to the king. Along with Meltzi, da Vinci departed for France, never to return. He lived in the Château de Clou, now Clouluse, near the King's Summer Palace along the Loire River in Amboise. As in Rome, da Vinci did little painting during his time in France. One of his last commissioned works was a mechanical lion that could walk and open its chest to reveal a bouquet of lilies. Da Vinci died of a probable stroke on May 2, 1519, at the age of 67. He continued to work on his scientific studies until his death, his assistant, Meltzi, became the principal heir and executor of his estate. The Mona Lisa was bequeathed to Salaj. For centuries after his death, thousands of pages from his private journals with notes, drawings, observations and scientific theories have surfaced and provided a fuller measure of the true Renaissance man. Although much has been written about da Vinci over the years, Walter Isaacson explored new territory with an acclaimed 2017 biography, Leonardo da Vinci, which offers up details on what drove the artist's creations and inventions. The buzz surrounding the book carried into 2018 with the announcement that it had been optioned for a big screen adaptation starring. Learning never exhausts the mind. Leonardo da Vinci. Nothing strengthens authority so much as silence. There are three classes of people, those who see, those who see when they are shown those who do not see. Peers come from the heart and not from the brain. The greatest deception men suffer is from their own opinions. Art is never finished only abandoned. I love those who can smile in trouble who can gather strength from distress and grow brave by reflection. Tis the business of little minds to shrink, but they whose heart is firm and whose conscience approves their conduct will pursue their principles unto death. Leonardo da Vinci. As a well-spent day brings happy sleep so a life well-spent brings happy death. Poor is the pupil who does not surpass his master. I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. Iron rusts from disuse, water loses its purity from stagnation. Even so does an action sap the vigor of the mind. Why does the eye see a thing more clearly in dreams than the imagination when awake? While I thought that I was learning how to live, I have been learning how to die. The noblest pleasure is the joy of understanding. Nature is the source of all true knowledge. She has her own logic, her own laws, she has no effect without cause nor invention without necessity. A beautiful body perishes, but a work of art dies not. Time stays long enough for anyone who will use it. The human foot is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. The beginnings and ends of shadow lie between the light and darkness and may be infinitely diminished and infinitely increased. Shadow is the means by which bodies display their form. The forms of bodies could not be understood in detail but for shadow. Leonardo da Vinci. Intellectual passion drives out sensuality. Marriage is like putting your hand into a bag of snakes in the hope of pulling out an eel. Water is the driving force of all nature. It's easier to resist at the beginning than at the end. Where there is shouting, there is no true knowledge. All our knowledge has its origins in our perceptions. He who loves practice without theory is like the sailor who boards ship without a rudder and compass and never knows where he may cast. Just as food eaten without appetite is a tedious nourishment so does study without zeal damage the memory by not assimilating what it absorbs. Men of lofty genius sometimes accomplish the most when they work least for their minds are occupied with their ideas and the perfection of their conceptions to which they afterwards give form. Leonardo da Vinci. There are four powers, memory and intellect desire and covetousness. The two first are mental and the other sensual. The three senses sight hearing and smell cannot well be prevented, touch and taste not at all. Leonardo da Vinci. Every action needs to be prompted by a motive. 
Nature never breaks her own laws. I have wasted my hours.